In March of 2021, a piece of artwork called The First 5,000 Days by a prolific digital artist named Beeple sold for an eye-watering $69 million. Now, this wouldn't be the most that anyone's paid for a piece of art. We've seen you know, works from the great masters sell for a lot more than that. But the difference this time is that this piece of art wasn't on canvas, it wasn't made of stone or some other physical medium. It was a piece of digital art, and it was sold as an NFT or non-fungible token. So what exactly is an NFT? Well, you can think of an NFT as a signature on a totally unique digital asset. So if you think about something like money or even a digital asset like Bitcoin, every Bitcoin is exchangeable for another Bitcoin. Every dollar is exchangeable for another dollar. They're fungible meaning they can be easily exchanged for the same thing. If you think about artwork, artwork is non-fungible. So if you own a one of one Leonardo da Vinci painting, other than being a very wealthy individual, you would own the only one of its kind. There is no other da Vinci of that same kind that you can swap. So an NFT is basically a way to create the same kind of scarcity we see in the physical world, but in the digital world. And it turns out there are lots of use cases for that. Art is one, uh, collectibles is another, but increasingly things like IP. You know, if you're the person who owns the copyright to a specific asset, perhaps you can create an NFT to prove that that's the case. It's a one of one discovery, and so it should have a one in one digital asset. Within the art space, that's where we're seeing most of the excitement around NFTs. And those kinds of projects broadly fall into sort of one of three different categories. The first I would call cultural artifacts. So NBA Top Shots, for example, the National Basketball Association has partnered um, with this company to create uh, basically trading cards, except of trading cards, they're actually highlights of your favorite player. So you can buy the one of one of a specific dunk or a specific play that you know maybe matters to you. The second kind are totally unique digital assets like Beeple's 5,000 Days. So that is a one of one um, piece of original artwork. And then increasingly, we're seeing these things called uh, generative art projects, where basically an artist or creator will uh, develop a series of assets, you know, maybe it's a friendly cartoon figure, and each of them will have slightly different attributes. And depending on their rarity, someone might be willing to spend more for one than the other. Plenty of artists have created something similar in the past, like prints of their pieces of art, for example. The rarer the print, obviously, the more valuable it is. Why do people spend money on NFTs? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, they may have a, an emotional attachment to you know, their favorite athlete, LeBron James, or to their favorite artist and want to support that person or to you know, show that they care. Another is the status that comes with it. Art is a status symbol. You know, If you walk into someone's house and they have a million dollar painting on the wall, that certainly says something about who they are, that they're wealthy. And increasingly, we're seeing digital natives buying NFTs as a way to show their online communities that they're someone with a certain status, a certain wealth, and then, of course, these are assets. Like any other asset, some people buy them with the expectation of making a profit, selling at a higher price. So NFTs are a radical idea because we've never had digital scarcity for art, but in many ways they are built on a foundation of human behavior that's been around for a very long time. And since they're based on that foundation of human behavior, it has a very bright future and I think will continue to grow.